Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about how progressives don't care about people. They care about the people. It's a big difference. And we talked about moral circles. I know there's some progressives listening right now who are furious, but whatever. Here, here we are. We talked about moral circles. And remember we did this whole concentric circle thing. And in the middle is your family. And then it goes out and out, out further, further, further away, all the way to the universe and, and aliens. And progressives tend to care about far away concepts and then work their way in often to the detriment of the people who are in their immediate circle, their actual circle. Conservatives, their worldview tends to start in the middle and then work their way out. I find that to be a better way to live life because you can only really have an influence on the people around you. That is where you exert influence and it can really make a difference. Your obligation is as a man and a woman or a father and a mother, husband, wife, and a citizen are to those in your nearest moral circle. And if you live in a society where the leaders care about the people, it often ends very, very poorly and sometimes all the way to up to and including genocide as opposed to caring about people. There's a huge difference between the people and people. And last time we talked about it, we talked about it in relation to Springfield. And you think, well, how could, how could politicians let this happen to Springfield and so many other towns across the country? Well, it's very simple. It's because their, their bigger concern, and you can follow the money and all these other things too, but philosophically, it's because their bigger concern is for other countries, Haitians, more so than people in Springfield. They love humanity, but they don't think about humans and they certainly don't think about the people living in Springfield let me play this uh, one clip here we played that we talked about uh, C.S. Lewis the C.S. Lewis quote is he wrote to a friend he said it's one of the evils of uh, rapid diffusion of news is that the sorrows of the world come to us every morning he said I think each village was meant to feel pity for its own sick and poor whom it can help and I doubt if it's the duty of any private citizen to fix his mind on ills which he cannot help and in fact this may even become an escape from the works of charity that we can really do to those we know. Oh, I don't have to worry about the people around me because I care about the people. I don't have to care about people around me because I am so, I love humanity. I'm a global citizen. I don't have to be a good citizen because I'm a global, I don't have to be a, a good citizen of the country I live in because I'm a global citizen. That was C.S. Lewis's point. Here's a quick clip of, clip of Tucker. Because the point of love is not abstract, it's concrete. And if you love someone whose name you don't know, maybe it's not love. Maybe it's narcissism, actually. Maybe you're doing it so you can feel good about yourself without actually loving anyone. The whole concept of a community is itself fraudulent. What does that even mean? No woman ever gave birth to a community. It's a community. What are their names? Uh, it's a community. I don't know. Then you don't know anything. And you're not loving them. It's not possible to love groups of people it's only possible to love people, period. And so really what this is, is a war between the oldest war there is, everyone loves, right? But there are two kinds of people who love. Those who love the people, they're the ones who routinely commit genocide, and those who love people. And those are the ones you should love back. Okay, Slater, why are you bringing this up? This is a long intro, get to the point. Environmentalists. Environmentalists are, like the environmentalist freaks, <laughs> are narcissists and atheists. They're atheists because they don't believe in God and his sovereignty. They don't believe in or appreciate God protecting life on this planet so that we can live. That's why we talked about the magnetic field yesterday. Actually, I say that like I was like I was like making a brilliant point. I just happened. I randomly opened up Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything to and, and just a random page to prove how little we know about the Earth. But it was just a perfect example about the magnetic field. No one ever thanks God for the magnetic field. We don't even know how it's formed. 
We don't even know what it is. But it's protecting us from cosmic rays that would kill us instantly. But no glory to God for sustaining life on earth. No, no, no. It's about me, 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 me. And then like the flip of that is it's about me, 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 my car and my electricity. But really, it's your car, <laughs> your electricity and your private jet. Oh, you don't have a private jet? I do, but it's not my problem. It's your problem. It's your fault. So environmentalism is, is paganism and narcissism all rolled into one, but really paganism is narcissism. So I guess just paganism. <laughs> environmentalism is paganism. But they don't really care about the environment. That's my point. Here's my point. They don't really care about the environment. They care about the environment. You with me? But they care about the, in, the, bit, the, in, the environment, but they don't care about the environment. By the way, the word environment is a really weird word. Environment just means things that are things that are around you like environ it means to encircle it means surround and it didn't even it, it didn't it never even meant it meant an ecological thing until the 50s so i think we need to come up with a new word for it i don't i don't even like the word environment it, it doesn't describe anything properly it's too vague it's too meaningless it doesn't make it it's like oh i care about the environment well i don't i mean no we need, we need to like, totally change the words i don't know what words we need to use but environment is it's no good it, it's, it, it's been around forever, the word, but it, it never meant like pollution until relatively recently. All right, here's what I mean. Ask anyone in California if you're an environmentalist, and they'll all say yes. Californians pride themselves on being wonderful environmentalists. Gavin Newsom, to this point, just signed a bill banning plastic bags. Again. <laughs> again? What do you mean again? Yeah, well, a couple years ago, we banned plastic bags in California, but we didn't really ban them. What they banned was the single use thin plastic bags when you go to the grocery store. And they got rid of those because one time someone took a picture of a turtle who ate one and like, that's it. It was like, oh, heck broke loose and like turtles are eating bags. So we got to get rid of all the bags. I'm not kidding. So we got rid of all the, the thin plastic bags, but we replaced them with thick plastic bags. And the intent was you, people would reuse them. And I don't mean, um, there's, like, there's like the thin plastic bags, you know what I'm talking about, like super, super thin. And then there's like reusable bags with like a cloth handle, like a cotton handle and like a bag. There's, there's like an in-between state there where it's like, it's more like a single use plastic bag. It's just really thick. And the politicians thought that people would reuse them over and over, but no one did. So it turns out in like the six years that we banned plastic bags in California, people went from using seven pounds of plastic waste per person per year to 11 pounds of plastic waste per year. People are using more plastic for their plastic bags than they were before the ban. Are you with me? So California, this again, this is a great, perhaps the opposite is true. California banned single use plastic bags and people ended up using more plastic than they did before. All right. And they cost 10 cents a piece, by the way. So everyone was poor. So now California banned plastic bags for reals. There's no more, there's no, no more, no more plastic bags at all because the first one did the opposite. We wanted to decrease our plastic use, ended up using more. Oops. Okay, so we banned plastic. Like that's the entire, that's the type of environmentalism we are. Now Californians will pat themselves on the back being such great environmentalists, but they're not really. They're stupid stuff like that. We banned plastic straws. That's the, that's the stupid stuff we do in California. We dump 94% of the rainwater in the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta, 94% of it we put right in the ocean because of the stupid Delta smelt. It's this little dumb fish. So we take 94% of the water that comes down from the sky that God gives us in the sky to water our plants, 94% of it we put right in the ocean, and then we say, oh, we're in a drought. Everyone, you got to take shorter showers and you can't water your lawn. I'm not kidding. Californians are that type of environmentalists. By the way, you can't water your lawn so people then bought fake grass. And then a couple, like last year or two years ago, they came back and said, oh, you can't use fake grass anymore because there's chemicals in the fake grass. So now you can't do that. So now it's just rocks. Everyone's just got rocks. It's like, what, like, what is happening? Who are these people? They're that type of environment. They're save the smelt, ban the plastic bag. It's like this, this bizarre version of environmentalism. But you know what they don't care about? The environment. And you know what they certainly don't care about? People. San Diego. When I say San Diego, what do you think of? You should think of beaches. Okay, so you got San, imagine San Diego, beautiful city right on the bay. North of it, 
that's where you get the, the rich areas. You got your La Jolla, your Rancho Santa Fe, the, the wealthiest zip code in California. You got uh, Del Mar. That's where Bill Gates lives. It was in Del Mar. He bought like three giant mansions and tore them all down and built this huge one. Uh, it's where Mitt Romney lived. That's where Mitt Romney's uh, car, his uh, garage had an elevator for the car. I was in La Jolla. All right, so that's where all the nice, the nice. And then south of San Diego, you're getting closer and closer to the border. Maybe it's a 40, from downtown San Diego to the border, maybe it's a 45 minutes drive. Maybe something like that, maybe 30. So you got like a 30, 45 minute drive of towns and cities. They call it the South Bay. The beach that is furthest south, right along the border, is called Imperial Beach. There is no reason why Imperial Beach should not have the most expensive real estate in the state. It's, it's, a, it's stunningly beautiful to look at, piece of property. It's also the poorest. It's the poorest in all of San Diego, right on the beach. What do you mean? How, how could beachfront property, you got Bill Gates living on beachfront property, but 30 miles to the south, it's the poorest real estate in the entire state. Why? I don't know, it may have something to do with the 1.4 billion gallons of untreated raw sewage that flow into the ocean from Tijuana after every storm. Maybe. Maybe it's maybe it maybe it's something to do with the mayor coming out the other day and saying it's a massive, it's unlike anything we've ever seen. It's a sea of trash. Acres of plastic bottles, containers, tires, and sewage are currently sitting in the Tijuana River Valley. The water is so the ocean water is so contaminated with feces that the beaches of Imperial Beach have been closed for a thousand days. One thousand days days. You can't go in the water in San Diego, or at least in the Imperial Beach part. Three years, you can't go in the ocean. Now, fortunately, all this toxic sewage dissipates by the time it gets up to Coronado. Whew. 